It's often the case that when one has a large data set that takes up a lot of storage space on a computer, one of the ways to reduce the size of this data set is to convert it into a histogram format. And no, I don't mean make a histogram plot, I mean actually store it in a histogram format. This is commonly done in fields like particle physics, where you measure billions and billions and billions of particle events, and you don't wanna store information on each particular event, but you can accumulate them in histograms, which are compact ways of storing data, but where you slightly lose precision. In this video, we'll look at NumPy's histogram function, which is perfect for taking these large data sets and converting them into a histogram format. So as always, we have NumPy and Matplotlib. There's actually not too many other packages we'll be using. And then we have the specific plotting style as well that we use for all videos. So if you clicked on this video, you probably already have an idea of what a histogram is, but I'm going to define it anyways, just to make this video complete. You're probably used to seeing histograms as bar plots, but I think the best way of thinking about them is a way of converting a high dimensionality, large data set into a much smaller data set but with sacrificing precision, and you'll see what I mean. And so you could think of it like a bar plot, and suppose we have a data set with a bunch of different points, x, j, these could be random variables, they could be the height of people, you have a million people, a million different heights, and then the histogram is a way of counting the number of people in different height intervals. So the height of each bar, ci, this is the definition I'll use here is, ci is the sum of, well, I want all x, j's, so I look at all the data points that I have, that lie within this interval B I. And then each time I have a data point in that interval, I plus one to the bar because I have another um, data point. And so the B I are these intervals here. That's like a, a closed interval here and an open interval E1, E2. And uh, this is like a, a regular interval that you see in math. Um, and this is specified by two bin edges E1 and E2. And they're gonna be, you know, one interval, one interval could be like five foot six to five seven, five seven to five eight, five eight to five nine. We count the number of points in each bin and we add them all up. So in a coding setting, we're interested in taking this data set XJ and obtaining CI, BI, and then the edges, the E's as well. So we have C's, B's, and E's. So let's make our data set first. We're gonna have um, a million randomly normal distributed variables. So this is an array of length a million. They're just all random numbers. And we're gonna turn this data set, which is like this here, into a histogram. So for this, we use NumPy's histogram function to get the counts. The counts are C and uh, the bin edges, E. That's what the histogram function does. And if you want the bin centers, which I'll call B, uh, there's something else that you have to do afterwards. So here's a way of generating the counts in each bin and edges. And I'm just gonna call numpy.histogramx. This is the basic way to do this. And I look at C and I have, these are the number of counts, data points in each of the bins. And these are the edges, not R, E. These are the edges of each bin. And of course, if I look at the length of C, there's 10, but the length of the bin edges is 11. Of course, when you have 10 bins, there's going to be 11 bin edges. Now, it's often the case that you want the center of the histogram bins. And for this, you just use this operation here. We take the average of the consecutive bin edges. So I would just take, for example, E1 plus E2 divided by 2. And I do that for all the points in the array. That's essentially what I'm doing here, is I'm taking E1 that looks like this, and E uh, up to negative 1, which looks like this. And I sort of take this plus this divided by 2, and then this plus this divided by 2. And you see that this and this are the same. Then this plus this divided by 2. And so I get the average of the edges of the bins. So this gives me my bin centers and I can look at them and uh, now they look like this. And if I look at the length of this array, it's now 10 as well. So I have the same number of bin centers as I have counts in each bin. Uh, this allows us to then plot the bin centers versus the number of counts to make something like a, a scatter plot or a bar plot. So here I just make a scatter plot and then I have the bin centers on the X axis and the counts on the Y axis. And I get something that looks like this. And you can see that there's all, these are the number of points that lie within the bins. Uh, this, is, of course, is the bin center. And uh, you can see that we have something that kind of looks Gaussian, but we only have 10 bins. Uh, the thing is that matplotlib already has a way to plot histograms. Of course, this video is about storing histograms. But rather than doing this, if you just wanted to make a quick histogram plot of data, you could just call numpy.hist. So here's a plot.hist function. 
I, I just give it directly my data set and it will make a bar plot of the histogram. So of course there's ways to customize this histogram function. Uh, you can also specify your own bin edges. So for example, here I have 101 edges between negative five and five. So these are my edges, meaning the center of the bins is gonna be minus 4.95 minus 4.85, minus 4.75 sort of thing, but the edges are minus five, minus 4.9, and I have 101 bin edges, so I'm going to have 100 bins. Uh, then I call the numpy.histogram function again, same thing as before, only this time I specify my bin edges by using bins equals E, the array that I specified above. I get the center of the bins like before, remember C is counts, E is bin edges, and B is the center of bins. Um, and E is one greater, right? Because I have 101 bin edges, I will have 100 counts because there's 100 bins and there will be 100 bin centers as well. Uh, then I can make a scatter plot of the bins and bin edges and you can see that this really looks Gaussian, of course. Now I have more bins. Uh, you can see the structure of the uh, data a little more. Now it's also useful to consider weighted histograms as well. Uh, a weighted histogram is sort of like the definition above, only instead of having one here, you have a weight that corresponds to each data point. So for each data point xj, I now have a weight wj. And so an example of where you might use this is, well, suppose you had a 10,000 particles distributed along a line, and xj is the position of those particles in space. So let's make this array. So just like before, I have my data set, there's 10,000 randomly distributed particles in space, uh, I get my bin counts and bin edges. Here I specify bins equals 100. So I'm telling it explicitly, I want you to use 100 bins. This is different than specifying an array of bin edges. Here I'm just telling it how many bins I want. Then I get the bin centers like before. So if I just plot the normal histogram, of course, this is gonna be the number of particles in each of the bin intervals in space. So I look at this plot and this tells me how many particles there are in each of the bins that I specify in space. And you can see that they're sort of randomly, uh, they're normal distributed along the center here. But suppose you didn't wanna consider the number of particles, but rather the total charge of the particle in each bin in space. That would be like the charge distribution. And suppose that each particle has a charge Q is equal to XJ squared. Again, ignore units here, but suppose that it's proportional to XJ squared. And so if you wanted the total charge distribution in space histogram, uh, the number of counts here, or the height of each bin, you want to sum the total charge together. So here I take all the particles that lie within the um, ith bin, of course, on this plot, and I sum together the charge. For each particle that's in there, I plot, I sum up the corresponding charge. And I sub in, well, qj is xj squared, and so my weights, w, are equal to x squared. And so here I give my data set again, I give C and E as the bin edges. The only thing I change are that my weights are equal to X squared, where X is all these data points. And then I get my uh, bin centers as well. So now my counts are weighted by the weights, which in this case are X, J squared. And if I plot the charge distribution, well, now I get something that looks very different than the data distribution. And that's because the farther away that the particles are from the center, the larger charge they have. So this would be a weighted histogram of charge. Uh, if you're in something like particle physics or something heavy with statistics, uh, the bin weights of a histogram, of course, are important when the statistical uncertainty on each data point, xj, is different. For example, you might be much more confident in some data points than others, and then you would give the more confident data points a higher weight, so they contribute more to the sum of each bin. So there's a little bit of other functionality as well. There's a density argument you can feed to the NumPy histogram function here. And what it does is it makes it so that the, all the histogram heights, if I add all the bins together and I sort of take the integral of the histogram, uh, it's equal to one, the area is equal to one under the histogram. So I set density equal to true. I make the same sort of data set as before. I get my bin centers like that. And if I compute the integral by summing together all the counts, and then of course I have to multiply by the bin width because I'm taking the integral. This is the bin width, right? If I look at uh, B and I take the, and I take the consecutive difference between elements in B, that they're all the same. And then zero, this gives me the bin width. So I multiply the sum of the counts by the bin width and I should get an area of one, which is exactly what I get. And so then if I plot this as a scatter plot like this, you can see that if I were to integrate under this curve here, right? And you check what the area under this curve is kind of equal to, I would get exactly one. 
It's really useful for the y-axis. You can see that it looks a lot cleaner for one. And maybe you don't care about the total number of counts in each bin, but sort of the relative number of counts between bins. And then it's sort of normalizing to one just makes it nice. And I sort of want to end with this conclusion here because the main purpose of histograms, like I said at the beginning of the video, is taking a high dimensionality data set that takes up a lot of space on a computer and converting into a much smaller data set. So what exactly do you lose when you take a data set, all those X values, and turn it into bins and counts? Well, for one, you lose the order of the data points. Everything gets aggregated in bins, so you don't know the order of the data that it's sort of specified. You don't know X1, X2, X3, X4. It all becomes jumbled together and put in bins. But the main thing that you lose is the precision on the data points, because you're counting the number of data points that lies within a particular bin. When you have the data in its raw format, you might know that a particular data point is equal to minus 2.5134, you know, some big long number. But uh, when you put things in bins, all you know is that, for example, maybe in this case, you know it's between minus 2.5 and I know it's not the case in this histogram, but maybe uh, you know it's between minus 2.5 and minus 2.4. So you lose that precision, right? You have a wider range of where each data point could be. But in many cases, maybe you don't need to know the precision of the data that precisely. So you collect a lot of data. This is what's done in particle physics, by the way. You collect a lot of data and you put it into histograms so it can be stored efficiently with the memory that we have on computers. So let's actually see how much data reduction occurs. So here I'm going to generate 10 million uh, randomly normal distributed variables. And if I look at the number of the size of this data in megabytes by taking the size of the array and multiplying by the number of bytes per element, then I divide by a million because I want megabytes. 80 megabytes. Now suppose I convert this to a histogram where I have my counts and my edges. So I do the command like I was doing before and I have a 100 bins. And if I look at the, the size of the array B, remember the bin centers becomes an array and the counts becomes an array. If I look at this, they each take up uh, like 0 0.0008 and 0 0.0008. So I've gone from 80 to this very small number. And of course, if I use more bins, then this number gets larger. For example, if I use 10,000 bins, now I'm 0 0.08. And I still have pretty good precision on these numbers when they're put into this histogram with 10,000 bins, but I'm using much less storage than 80 megabytes. So you get a massive reduction in the amount of space used to store your data, but as a trade-off, the precision is lost. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm bound to make mistakes when I make these videos. I misspeak a lot. If you caught me doing that, then be sure to leave a comment and a timestamp and I'll make a comment myself and pin it to the video and make sure that people understand uh, whatever I said that was just totally wrong. Join the Discord server as well. There's a link in the description to that and I'll see you next time.